What does Facebook know about you? Maybe two or three answers. Maybe something more like, don't, don't say age, gender. No, like people who want to say something more, more. Patrick. Nine gigabyte of data. All right. <laughs> Good. So Facebook has uh, has uh, for me. I I asked them to give me the data that they have about me. It's thirteen and a half gigabytes. But I'm a more heavy user since 2008, right? But on average, it's like eight to nine gigabytes of data, which is a text file, which we have about all of you, right? So, and if you don't have a Facebook profile, they have a shadow profile about you. All right. One more answer, yeah? Which website I visited and which buttons I clicked on the website? Yeah, exactly. So, like, um, not every website can be perfectly tracked, but uh, but yes, they know the biggest ones are all. Had the Facebook Pixel when it was still working, you know. So going to that. So yes, your browsing behavior. Okay. Other things, of course, we know about you is um, your scrolling behavior. Like every single second, you looked at every single post in the last, for me, like 13 years or whatever, right? Uh, let me quickly show you from what documentary how how this looks like. No, but what what they know. Right, so every second, if you zoom in, they, 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 they notice this. They know when people are pressed, they know when people are looking at photos of your ex-romantic partners, they know what you're doing late at night, they know. Right, so it was fully un unprecedented um, what, what Facebook, we can't come to this soon. It was fully unprecedented uh, what Facebook knows about you, right? So we get handed as marketers, who here runs Facebook ads? Oh, it's quite a couple of people. All right, so we get handed this very, very powerful tool, and when you learn how to drive a car, when you learn how to, to sail, uh, which is actually both pretty easy task compared to other things, you have to do first do a, do a test, right? Uh, we get handed this crazy powerful tool, the most powerful tool, which was invented about knowledge of, on humans, and we just get to do it, right? No one is testing us if you have good motives behind it, nothing. Yeah? Uh, another thing also, like for example, this is crazy, but we get some things, of, or, Having kids, right? It's a big responsibility to raise a kid, a kid well. Well, there's no test to have a kid, but you have to have a test to sail a boat, right? These things, which uh, in Facebook ads are going to be very, very powerful, and no one tests you anything because they want money. Facebook optimizes towards money, right? So they just just let you do it. And uh, four years ago, I saw this documentary, and for me, it really made click of we have this powerful tool. So let's be as ethical as we can about it, right? And um, the cool thing was the old mindset was optimize ads towards rowers, which on ad spend. The new mindset is optimize ads so people feel better after seeing your ad, or neutral, but not worse than after seeing your ads. And I'll give you some, some uh, examples. And, and also push it that your brand is seen as a positive way, but you never annoy people with your brand, and people really start loving your brand more and more, which is long-term value, and having a good rowers, right? And the crazy thing is, um, every time we went from a brand and actually made the ads more ethical, or we changed our ads, it always increased the ROAS, right? So actually, ethical ads increase your ROAS, because people value it. Like, you all see ads, and you all hate to see ads like, that, that are unethical. One of the examples, um, as a German brand, um, they said, aren't you embarrassed of your smile? Because they're selling teeth whitening products. This is a terrible message, right? This is a terrible message. And some people are going to buy, but they still feel bad about themselves. Some people are not going to buy because they're currently broke, they can't afford it. But you make sure that you leave a lot of people very sad on the day. And uh, I think that Facebook should do interventions there, but they shouldn't be running, but they don't, because we optimize to money, right? So um, I was just like contacting them, hey guys, I'll get you a better ad for free, but just use a better ad. And we in 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 changed it with user generated content, but the person was, was showing how happy she was with it. And right away, people loved it more, and the rowers went up by a lot. Right? So we, re we easily replaced their, their ad. It was the best performing ad before. Uh, another example of, uh, you an example of unethical ads. No? I'm not even going to show you this ad because I'm going to promote the brand. But this is like a, a woman in a bikini coming out of a pool, and then she hugs a man, and this man is wearing a white T-shirt. And of course, what do they sell? The white t-shirt, right? And I don't know, who of you has been wearing a white shirt and hasn't been hugged by a girl who came out of a pool? Never. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, <every time. laughs> 
So like the, the white t-shirt doesn't get you, they're selling you effects of a product that are not existing, you know, like, and it was a hundred euro white, white t-shirt and you should not, you shouldn't use sex, 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 sex to sell. I, for me, the things that we, we try to do, we try to, um, we try to never um, dropship low quality products. Dropshipping can be okay, but don't pollute the, uh, pollute the environment by dropshipping a plastic product which is going to break down after one or two uses because you only leave an unhappy customer and you pollute the environment, right? Yeah. So don't, don't do that. Don't leave people feeling bad after seeing the ads. What, what, what kind of thing? No, it's, it's very important to just have basic understanding. I'm not going to give you all the guidelines. No, just have like, maybe follow a little bit the golden rule. No, like, don't do to anything what you don't want to have done to you. Right? Before you launch your ad, you're like, if I was going to see this ad and I had a shitty day, like everything went, went bad that day and I see this ad on top, would it make me happy or not? And if it would leave me neutral, it's already okay-ish, right? But if you say, okay, this would actually depress me more on a sad day, depression rate is at an all-time all high, uh, we don't want to contribute to this, no? Because with ads go well, you can easily reach uh, 100 million people, 1 billion people, it's possible, right? So we have some very powerful here, and we do want to you know, do it well, and the good thing is, the rowers will be better, right? And I'll show you examples. One of the ads that uh, is just, you know, it's not a perfect product, but it guarantees you leaves people happier, is this one. I wish I could bring milk and cereal in the car without making such a mess. Introducing the Crunch Cup. Now you can take your milk and cereal on the go. It's just not possible. Who feels worse after seeing this ad? You feel worse? The <laughs> man died. I was gonna wait for this question. Obviously, it's a, it's a joke, you know. But yeah, so this is not an ad that will make you like on a shitty day you come home and everything went, went wrong. This ad is not gonna pull you down more, right? Um, okay. Now let, let, let's come to this. So this used to be uh, one of the Mela Facebook ads eight uh, eight eight years ago. So I'll quickly give you the, the story on on this. So um, I'm from Munich. Um, but moved to Barcelona, uh, well, seven and a half, eight years ago. And uh, then, obviously, I had job offers in Vienna and in Munich, but I was like, okay, Barcelona is just, I mean, you see it, no? It's, the food is amazing, the, the life quality, the, the sun, you know, the, all the sports you can do all the time. So I, I, choose, I choose my place where I want to live before I had a job, right? So just after uni, okay, it's going to be Barcelona. And then I arrived and I, and I realized, oh, shit, uh, there's not so good jobs here. <laughs> what, what, what am I gonna do? Uh, I don't, don't want to go back yet. So my my plan was just I was like 24 and I was like, okay, I'll just start a company every month, give it a month to see if there's market demand, and then if it's not, I'll do the next one. So six companies launched, all of them failed, uh, terrible. My parents give me a lot. Of, my parents give me a lot of pressure of like, you know, we we helped you to go through uni, and uh, thank you for now <laughs> doing doing this, and. Uh, uh, company number seven, uh, we were like the three Spanish guys, um, um, was Meller, right? And right away we saw market traction, right? So sometimes it should not be too hard in the beginning, um, because then if it's too hard, the best traction is going to be crazy hard to get later, right? You can do it with the best ads, but it's a good thing if you start and it's actually like one example. No, like this was already one of the more sophisticated ads back eight, ten years ago, but. Let's see, we put like free Mela sunglasses. Um, by the way, whoever guesses what happened to my hand gets a Mela sunglass. So just a competition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pirate, pirate life. Um, but uh, like imagine back in the days, not just to make an example, but it was actually easier. Like you're not doing bad now if you cannot get a 12 rowers. It's just ch times have changed, no? So what we did, we one of the first ads was like, I got free sunglasses and I put them over like a string take my iPhone 5 full of pixels, picture, upload this picture, Roas 12. Oh, good, you know, like, <laughs> like imagine doing that now, like Francesco, if you do that now, what happens? <laughs> right, so it was, eight years ago was pretty cool, right? So, um, but then of course we were also evolving. Um, the, the sunglasses here, like here you see all the sunglasses. Um, Kilian showed us his, uh, his, uh, his nerdy, nerdy glass. <laughs> So we actually also have blue light glasses, <laughs> which look cooler. 
<laughs> so everyone wants to use, you just use the code Chris, Chris, Chris Ertel, everything's written together, and uh, you can get the best discount, and you can get a blue light, uh, which uh, blue light are important, and I loved his speech, it was uh, genius, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be red, you know? It can, can be white and looking cool still. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, as you see here, Mela, all the sunglasses are very colorful. So which animal can change the color? Chameleon. <laughs> chameleon. The biggest chameleon in the whole world, the biggest species, is called Mela chameleon. And that's where the name comes from. It's not my last name, like many people think, right? Um, so um, yeah, here you see our, 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 our page. That's one of the video ads that was running good like four to five, five years ago. And uh, just to show everyone, just for a joke, I want to show you like, this is how it looked like in the days to upload Facebook ads. Now it's not ads manager. You had power editor. Who, who still use power editor? <laughs> ah, a couple of people. <laughs> but only very, I think four people, no? Did I count? Five, six, six people. So it used to be a tool where you upload the ads, but then there's another tool to optimize the ads. <laughs> and Facebook was, at, after 10 years of running it this way, we were like, yeah, maybe there should be a better way to do this. <laughs> and now it's only one tool, right? But it was the days, and it was like, um, yeah, maybe a quick anecdote of why you need meditation if you're a marketer. Um, one day I was uploading, I think it was 850 new ad variations, right? Different copies, like Philip told us, and different, different angles, uh, different bold statements, different questions. And... Um, and I was all day sitting there and creating them, right? And at the end of the day, like it was already like 10 p.m. or so, and you should pull, press a button of upload. And I was like, you know, like at least eight hours doing this. And there was a Facebook error, 404, internal error, we are sorry, it's all gone. <laughs> so imagine if you spent nine plus hours uploading and thinking of stuff, and yeah, you really need, in those moments you need meditation, because if not, you destroy your computer. <laughs> Which I, I didn't destroy mine, eh? but <laughs> I was angry. Um, that's one of the vi video ads that also was uh, back in the days r r running well. But no worries, also I'll show you the ads that are going good nowadays. All right? Um, one other quick, quick story of like, don't only think I'm going to use my ads to sell whatever you want to sell, right? Video courses, or you want to get leads, or you want to sell a product. Sometimes think out of the box. Right? If there's a situation where you think, okay, Facebook ads could be used for something else, uh, do it. Like this was an example. Uh, within like, I think it was four or five months of starting the company, uh, uh, Volkswagen contacted us of like, hey, Volkswagen Spain, we have an idea. Everyone who test drive for Volkswagen could get a Mela sunglass, so we get more people to test drive for Volkswagen. Right? For them, it's, it very, it's good to give some gifts away so people actually come and try, try the cars. And we were like, okay. And we were like, obviously, like, we're open to that. And we're like, okay, we're going to do some internal checks. And in two months, we have a final meeting. And then we see if we do it or not. And someone in, in Volkswagen told us, if they find out that you have four guys in a garage, they will never do this deal because they hate and they have burned themselves in the past working with two small startups because we could have failed in between and then they would have lost the deal. It would have looked bad. So we couldn't. We had to seem big, right? So we, we took this picture, it costed like 25 euros because that's the cost of a smoke bomb and we saw two, two friends. And we uploaded, we told Facebook, give us the most amount of, uh, of likes and comments under this. And we quickly got 250,000 likes under this, right? Again, back in the day, CPM was 1.2, something like this. Um, <laughs> and then what we did, we just, uh, you know, you can drop a pin, right, with Facebook. And uh, we just looked for the head headquarters of Volkswagen Spain is, which is outside Barcelona. We dropped a pin there, and we said frequency 10 every day, boom, let it run. So everyone who was working there when they did their work breaks, they always saw this ad, right? And uh, when we came to a meeting, they were like, we have this very big German company. <laughs> how, how do you outperform us in likes and comments? And we have like, I don't know, how, how many, how many German Volkswagen cars are on the roads? I have no idea, but um, well, uh, therefore, we got the deal. So sometimes also think out of uh, out of the box. Now we also sometimes use Facebook ads to hire people, and it has worked. Normally, you do your main thing, but if you want to be creative, it it works, right? Okay. So now let's come to the creative parts. Okay. These are just some some slides of certain elements that go well. We can go into this into more detail in person. 
I'm not going to bore you with this now. But what used to be true back then is like you could actually trim Facebook and get good targetings, and that would actually make an effect. Right? Nowadays, creative is everything, right? Um, you, can have, you can have the best targeting, the best things, especially post iOS 14, it became even more important. So, what, what I really recommend you is um, if you love reading books and nerding out about it, this book, The Second Machine Age, prepares you very well of like, what's going to happen in the next, the next years, right? So, there'll be more and more jobs being, being auto, automated, right, by, um, by bots. And we, the solution of this book, right, they say like to prepare yourself over the next five to ten years is actually to find a job where you work together with a ma machine, right? And that's exactly what we're doing. We are merging with the algorithm of TikTok or Facebook. We are working together. What the machine does better is the targeting, right? What the machine doesn't do better is the copywriting. What the machine doesn't do better for sure is the first second of the video ad, what gets the attention, what, what can be filmed, right? There's something that maybe in 20 years, 15 years, the machine will do better. We have a gap yet, right? So if you only optimize on, like, if your, your job is only, I'm going to be the best at getting the campaigns uploaded in this, maybe already think of doing a slight shift because this is going to happen very, very fast, but all of those things are going to be automated. So you really want to be on the creative side. And uh, so, so that's for me what I understood, and now we focus fully on getting the best possible creatives, but also follow the ethical guidelines of like not leaving people feeling worse, and this actually gets a good draws. So I'll show you some, some of the creatives that are working very well and some easy guidelines to follow for There's that. There's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There is no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's just a trained memory and an untrained memory. Does that make sense? Now, here's the thing. I grew up with these learning challenges. I had all these difficulties all through school, all through elementary, middle school, junior high, high school. I had all these challenges. At the age of nine, I remember a teacher looking at me thinking, Okay, interesting way the slide jumps. All right, um, so here we go. Um, just to quickly go into it now. So this is one of the more curated ads, and you will later see easier examples which you can copy easier, right? But some of the things, so Mindvalley is one of the biggest companies that I'm helping with creators with. So what we see here, obviously, and if you look at the, please, all of them, if you want, go to the ad library, you will see like 1,200 ads live there because ad budget is 50 million plus, right? But um, here we, we always see that video ads go well, and we do want uh, a bold statement, right? Question or bold statement. Here, bold statement performs best. The, and we want this to be a positive bold, bold statement. It could also be like, we could have easily called people like, you have a bad memory, we'll help you. But you leave people feeling worse. We tell them you have a bad memory. It's much, it's much more life affirming. There's no such thing as a good or bad memory, because everyone, I always, I get angry at myself. Normally, I love myself, right? But I get angry because I forget people's names. And I get angry at this. And I'm like, I feel guilty about it. And for me, reading this, there's no such thing. It's just an untrained memory that helps me, right? And, um, and also, obviously, if you can, there's something that really works. If people can be recognized, so we actually, the, we have pictures of, of Jim Quick with uh, Richard Branson, with Obama, with Bill Clinton, and we A-B test those. That helps, but not every business can, can get that, but if you have something, right, that will probably also something that helps in the first second to give us in the image, but then the video plays right away. So I'll show you again the fir first second of the video. There's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There is no such thing. Okay, very easy start. Text super big in the video, get the attention. The whole ad, what's the length of the whole ad? And this is an exception, right, but what do you think, how long is the whole ad? 38 minutes, and some people <laughs> watch it all. It's a pretty cool video, okay? Again, coming to this, normally your ads want to be shorter, right? So in, in the, for feeds, what we see best, um, where most of the top performing ads are is 19 to 29 seconds, right? This is a, a good length in, in the feed. Here now come things that you can copy very easily, right? This is an ad that many of, many of you have uh, copied, or many of you can copy. It's a very easy format, right? So we, what we do is here, we upload five images of your product, 
in this case is a, a, a meat of a lob, lob, lobster, and then one video, which is a UGC of someone preparing it and celebrating it. So I'll play it, very simple. Okay, so this is a lobster All right, okay. So basically, in this case, it makes sense, right? We don't want to pay who is rich enough already, Mark Zuckerberg, okay? We don't want to make him more rich for un, 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 uh, unimportant reasons. So of course, we could have run an ad first showing the, the UGC, later then showing the images, but we pay Facebook twice. Why would we do that, right? In this case, it makes perfect sense. This is four by five, it fits in the feed perfectly, so we can very easily Upload this, we show images of, of a product or of what it is, and a video, both, both within one. And people are not used to this format, so it works, it works better. And it's very easy to, to copy that. 96% um, of the ads have more than one scene, right? So if you can follow the heartbeat method, that's good, but every heartbeat, every second, the, the scenes change. Um, again, this was a very easy ad to make. Like this ad, the budget was like, 150 euros for the world, uh, world Food Program, right? I'll play this one. 70 cents. You can't get much for that. <laughs> 70 cents. We can give a lot for that. Just 70 cents. Shared meal feeds child in Donating has never been easier. From the Shared Meal app. Download now. Okay. You have many, many scenes in here. And also in the one of uh, Mindwell, you have many scenes. Most of the ads that I'll show you, you have many scenes. I think there's one ad, there's one scene, all the others have many, many scenes. Uh, who here does TikTok ads? Okay, so what's important for TikTok ads? You wanna see what are the trends, and you wanna follow the trends. That's super key. How, how does it perform if you upload a Facebook ad to TikTok? Uh, how does it perform if you upload a TikTok ad to Facebook? Yay. Hey! <laughs> right? So it makes a lot of sense to do, even if you have small budget on TikTok, just crush it on TikTok and then you have all the content you need for Facebook. Right? So TikTok ads work on Facebook. And also I with my, my big clients, uh, Hello Buddy or Mind Valley, we always do a little bit on TikTok because then we get the good creators and then we can push, push them over, right? That, that, that really helps. Um, and there are some, uh, some effects like the green, green screen background, which is designed where it's so easy that every person can, can do it. Who of you recorded a video with green screen background already? Was it hard, Patrick? Very hard. Very hard, okay. <laughs> Good. So, um, making an ad out of this is something that's super simple and it's real. You have someone explaining about it, it's super real. This ad is not going to leave people feeling worse, right? It's just a helpful advice, and um, I'll play it. Got my iPhone story from this to this in just seconds using the Smart Cleaner app. The Smart Cleaner app allows you to delete all your similar photos and videos, such as screenshots, live photos, and burst photos. They also have a secret space where you can put your photos, videos, and contacts, as well as giving tips on how to make your battery life. All right, so the only thing in this bad in this ad, her voice can be annoying, you know, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's an American ad. No, so. There's a, like, for example, one of the trends that you follow right away and it goes well, right? So it's always, every week, check what are the main trends and then you work in this. You can also check what competitors are doing. For example, if you do it in the skincare industry, just make a new TikTok account and you only watch skincare videos for, for half an hour. The algorithm is very fast, way faster than Facebook algorithm. You'll only see skincare content and then you can get all the ads and you can find all the ads there, right? So, that, that makes a lot of sense. Another thing that we saw working very, very well um, is um, if a video, if you have a question and then you reply, the person replies to the, to the question, and then therefore in this afterwards reply sells a product. Uh, who knows La 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 Laura, Laura Seiler? Okay, so it's a, it's a German woman who is very cool, super nice, nice, nice person, and she wants to be kind of a German Tony Robbins. 
So one of the next ads we're going to try, because I, I'm very happy to, to help her, is uh, that she's going to answer a question. And then with this question, she's going to talk about her next course that she does. And pe people, yeah. So one of the things also, is like some, if some people are very popular, it's easier to run ads. Because all the comments we get is just like, oh, we love you so much. We love your products. It's like, uh, like we only we put one ad live, and within minutes, it has like so much love comments. So we never have to do anything, because it just people really celebrate her, and we're really happy with her courses in, in the past, right? Um, all right, another easy hack to copy, you know? Like, because I'm sharing a couple of easy hacks, what you can do. Who knows the page? Dude with a sign. Right. Um, it's a funny page to follow. It's like 8, eight million followers. It really works. Uh, maybe, Patrick, can you share your experiences uh, walking through Barcelona with uh... I was about to explain that story right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is not planned, eh? <laughs> so Facebook and Instagram ads. Who have you seen this ad? Who have you actually already heard the story? Well, then I'm going to tell you in a lot of detail what is going on. I'll make it very short. So, we both live very much in the center of Barcelona, but the picture of me with the sign was taken at the beach, right? So, it took me like 20 minutes walking to the beach. And me, obviously, I have to carry this sign. To be to take picture. I mean, I'm not stupid. I'm not the dude with a sign, and I would walk through the city like this. <laughs> I'm a douchebag. I would not do that. I would carry it under my arm, right? I would just walk like this. And guess what? Out of 100 people that came from the other side towards me, what do you think? How many people actually tried to read what it says on the sign? Even though I was carrying that like this, at least 90. Honestly, so I was just walking through the city, and at least 90 out of 100 people tried to. Okay, what does it say, you know? So there's something that, in psychology, it's called need for completion. Our human brain always wants to, you know, have to complete the full information. And what Chris and I have then reflected quite heavily about this, what works in the real life, typically could also work on the online environment. So we started running ads, basically saying, we learned Facebook and Instagram ads, and guess what? They've got really high click through it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well explained. So, with a couple of couple of brands, we also try to have every once in a while a dis uh, discount. I mean, Meller sometimes does discount, as you maybe have seen, right? So there's something that can work for some e-commerce e-commerce brands. If it does, for example, Meller two per one, people buy like crazy. All right. So, it makes sense now to have um, a sign with a green screen. And whenever we want to announce something, we just change the, the, what it says here, two for one, or like Black Friday special, or whatever we want, or just to get the attention. But it makes sense for your brands probably to have um, an image with, in this case, if we work with Laura Seiler, it would make sense that she holds it because people already know her. But if your brand can also be like a guy, maybe have someone who looks like him a little bit, so you could use, use that, or like just, you know, have a green screen and then you can edit that to whatever you need. You can announce like the summer sale, or you can announce that you launched a new product. Like whatever you want to announce, you will probably get more attention if it's on a sign. That, uh, that's an easy hack that, that, that's helpful. Now let's brainstorm together, right? Because you're all very awake. So um, the, this company comes to you, and they tell you, please brainstorm a good ad for us. But the product is an AI-powered uh, AI powered image sharp sharpener. So right, it makes uh, for Andrea. Is Andrea here? Yeah. So for people who are photographers, it makes sense sometimes to have your images even more sharp. And this is done by AI here. So I would say it's a pretty boring product. It's a useful product, but pretty boring product. How would you make an ad out of this? Let's brainstorm a bit. Maybe two or three ideas of uh, copyright there. Let's go. <laughs> I would use a very blurry image. Something like, uh, is this as good as it's getting, or how can you spice it up? Okay. All right. One more idea. I would probably use a, a cook who sharpens his knives and say, why can you sharpen your knife but not your images? Well, we got a solution for you. <laughs> okay. So, exactly. So both of them could have worked, and it's like always A/B test everything. No? So in Mela, we did three and a half thousand A/B tests for different angles and things. So always A/B test everything. So these are definitely things we could have A/B tested. We just went like, let's keep the simple way. I asked them, like, who is your happiest client? 
maybe he can be on the camera just telling how much he loves the product. Just keep it simple, word of mouth recommendation. And of course, the cool thing is now we don't run it from their boring company name, but from his private Instagram. Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Seibert. I go by the Holding Eye on Instagram. I'm a New York City area-based freelance photographer with a specialization in aerial photography. Flying around in a helicopter or an airplane around New York City is not always the easiest to get the sharpest images. So when I found... Okay. So very easy. He just said he found the company. It helped him. Boom. And it also doesn't look like an ad. Like nowadays, the worst thing is if it looks like an ad, right? That's how you get people to scroll over. Um, so make things that don't look like an ad. Does this look like an ad to you? I mean, yes, it says sponsored, but on the first glance, not, 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 doesn't look too much like an ad, no? Uh, this ad is in German, so sorry for the non-German speakers, but I'll just put it for 10, 10 seconds. Um, this ad is for the Calm app, which is like a meditation app. But they understood that if someone who is even, in this case, a little bit famous in Germany, uh, talks well about them, it's a better angle than if they say, we are good. Right? It's, like, it's such a boring thing of like Mella saying, we are good at sunglasses. You know, obviously, we're going to say that. It's like the most like, customer expects nothing else. Ich bin schon seit längerer Zeit ein riesengroßer Calm App Fan und ich nutze die App gerne, um am Morgen fokussierter und motivierter an den Tag zu starten und am Abend runterzukommen und mein Gedankenkarussell aufzuhalten. Hi, ich bin Stefanie und ich freue mich so sehr, endlich mitteilen zu dürfen. Dass es okay, so very easy, ne? So, so sometimes you actually don't have many scenes. It can, can be out of out of the box sometimes. Um, in this case also because sometimes the VIPs only send you one or two videos and you just have to work, work with that. But it's very important, or if you can, to work with um, their profiles and not always having the brand because then people understand, okay, this is an ad for sure. All right, so now we learn a lot about what are the elements that, that can make ads easier. Now the, the, the format of the images around, um, for example, is something that works well. Or having bold statement questions. But now that we have, we found a good baseline of the ad. Can we make the ad be better? Probably, right? And that's how most people stop. Most people go like, okay, now I found something. I need a ROAS of 3.2. This has 3.5. I'm good. I'm going to go home and I'm going to scale it all I want. And I'm never going to touch with creative again. And this happens all the time. And it's like so annoying. I'm like, okay, you're not done. You, know, like, you can always. Um, there's a very clear correlation to the average view time and the return on ad spend. So if you get people to actually watch it longer, they will, they will buy more. And how to get them to, to, watch, to watch it and watch more? If you actually get their attention better in the first second. So here are just some, some, some tests how to get their attention. Normally what we try to do, and you can do also less, but we try to do 15 versions of the first second. I'll show you a couple, a couple of them. And then you find which one works best. And normally, the first one has at least double the ROAS of the second one. It's always a big, big jump when you find one that's really, really good. So in this case, it's like selling a, a wallet. Let's play it. On this thing, your credit card's there, your cash there, you clear. This is my wallet. It blocks RFID and comes in a bunch of different colors and styles. It's As you see, also what I told you, many scenes, many cuts. Okay. The last part that you saw of only goes, this is my rich wallet. This is the main ad. This is always going to stay the same. But we'll, we can happily change the first second. With question, for example. This is my rich wallet. Yeah. Or, because it's a US product, let's use an action. Right? Or comparison. Check out my old wallet. Look how big and bulky this thing is. Or as someone on Mount Everest. <laughs> Right? Very easy. So you can easily just have different first, first seconds. Uh, what do you think? Which one won in the end? The gun. The gun, yeah. So, so the, the gun was second. <laughs> it's US. No, the, 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 the first one was uh, the bold, bold, bold statement. The interest favorite wallet. But we wouldn't have known before, right? Um, all right. So now, um, let's just quickly check. Yeah. So now, um, but we know that creative is super important. You should focus on this. Yes, 
but you still have to find a way to get to get the, the, the data. And I could show you a hack of what helped for Meller, because since I was 14, the data was gone and uh, hot like retargeting is working poorly, which still is working poorly. It used to be very good, but it's not it's not good. Uh, if someone has uh, retargeting campaigns that were working well, tell me. Uh, for us, it's, it's harder. Um, but obviously, what is um, what we needed is to get our data back to know which creators perform better now, right? To make all these tests, we have to be sure that there's differences in ROAS, which after iOS 14 was getting much more blurry, okay? And just for Mela, what, what, what helped for us, there's many solutions. We tried like high ROAS, triple whale. In the end, we, we are now happy with, with Tracify, which is one of many solutions, because it's a Chrome plugin and they do fingerprint UTM tracking, right? And they bring this data back into our ad account, and then we see here what's the real rollers we're getting, and we can check last click, first click, whatever you need, how many add to cards we're really getting, and so on. And this actually really helps us. Like, what I like about it, and that's also what, what you said, no, Emmanuel, you said like, you like it, but it's simple. Like, your employees cannot, uh, what did you say yesterday? Yeah, you can't mess it up, right? So it's like, a, it's a simple solution. <laughs> it's like a Chrome plugin, it brings the data back, and um, it's, it has only a couple of buttons, so like, it's like this, right? So it's a, it's an easy solution. You have now this um, interface with more, much. huh? You really too much. Yeah, <laughs> too much. You say you want uh, the, the U shape out, right? <laughs> they're clicking too much. Yeah, exactly the same. For me, like for Mela, like just first click, last click, and we're good. But it helps us to bring our our, our data back, no? Um, the other thing that sometimes I'm mostly I'm very skeptical with Facebook advice that they give us. I think also it was it was you and Manuela you said this morning that. They are shocked that you put 15,000 on a Sunday. Same for us. They tell me the same. Uh, so definitely, who wasn't here this morning, it makes sense to find your best days, put the influencers on, on this day, and push those days very hard. Right? So we would also sometimes spend seven times more on, uh, depends on the brand, no? Mela, the best day is a Monday. Some other brands, the best day is a Sunday. It really depends. But uh, to push those days extremely hard, the worst day, and this is just a general, but I've seen a lot of companies, was Fridays, okay? But this, again, check for your company, but Fridays are typically terrible. So we really spend very little on, on, on those days. One of the advice from Facebook that actually I follow, they told me, look, we can actually operate better if you have fewer campaigns, because they used to go crazy, and have high budget in these fewer campaigns, right? So we actually try to have scaling campaigns where we only have maybe three or four campaigns with only three to four ad sets and maybe one to two ads inside. But now this crushes my, my passion, which is creative testing, right? So obviously, we still have a ton of testing campaigns uh, to make our three and a half thousand A-B tests, but these have small budgets you see here, okay? So you wanna have a couple of campaigns, three, three to four, with high budgets and the rest small budgets for testing campaigns. Mm. Um, Hello Buddy is one of the companies that, um, yeah, I really liked helping and they re really recently found a new checkout process, which is easier, so I just want to share it because everyone has a pain of having like a, what's a perfect checkout process? It's not perfect, no, but it's just something that is working good. It's like you click on the product and you see right away, it adds other products in the cart without you doing anything, it says price zero. Because you, you hit, uh, ah, I have to click it again, one second. Ah. Okay, let's see. I know it's hard to see, but I'll explain you now. So it's, um, when you go through it and you go to um, add, add, add this to the card, now it's gonna make these animations of be like, okay, look, all these products are now added. And now, because we want you to use a discount code, because you buy more when you use it, we make it very easy for you to see it. Right, it's even shaking and moving. So you're like, okay, we want, we want, want you to, 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 to see this. And uh, we encourage people to increase their average order value. Right, so that's, it's one of the, uh, Check out that's working better, right? In, in total, check, check it. Um, yeah. Now the thing is, um, as you see, I love nerding out about 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 ad 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 ad, 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 ad creatives and um, and a lot of other people ask me here also what I do, right? So I quickly explain you this because I get this asked like five times before I answer it ten times on dinner. Uh, so like Meller, yes, um, but I had a burnout four years ago. So also, if anyone here feels like we have a burnout, come to me, I can give you some things that helped for me, which was, for example, doing a Vipassana meditation, like 10 days of not talking, and you see I'm very talkative normally, uh, but it really helped. 
Um, but yeah, Mela is like, we are 32 people now, but because we are several founders, I'm not very involved, right? Because I, 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 could, I could move on and do more teaching or consulting of like the big companies like Mind Valley, Hello, Hello Buddy. And uh, once every year, what I do is like, because I love to nerd all about creative. So once every year we do like, a, but we meet up normally like 30 people and we, and we are meeting in Barcelona and W Hotel and we, we nerd out about creatives and I show you all the tricks of how to get better creatives for your businesses. So if anyone wants to do this, it's in September most likely. September, October, I always do it. Um, but yeah, really, if you have a burnout, really be careful with this, no? So it's something really, it's not fun, eh? And also, you're more in risk than most people because for me, the problem was sometimes if, you, if a boss kicks your ass, you work a bit more, but no one kicks your ass more than you, right? So if it's your own company and you're like, oh yes, every hour I spend more working for Mela now, it's gonna be more. And uh, when I'm a night person, I did my DNA test, right? And uh, I was sometimes until 4 a.m. in the office and like tweaking things and, that's not the most healthy, right? So the, for me, what I learned then is like to not optimize my life towards money, but optimize, op, uh, optimize it towards happiness or giving impact and passion or like, you know, and also this actually, it helps with, uh, when I met Richard Branson, he realized everyone on the island who was there, on Necker Island, asked to ask him for, you know, one guy came, I need 150 million because I have this project. It's like under ISS, the International Space Station. He had an international underwater station, which cost 150 million. He needs that money, and then he can be called Richard Branson Station. Everyone pitched him something. And he was like, Chris, what do you want? And I was like, I have everything. I just want to hang out and do breath work and play tennis with you and, you know, these things. And obviously, when he always came to me because he was like, ah, good. You know, he doesn't pitch me all the time. Um, so don't optimize your life towards what money is something that can create a little bit of happiness, but very limited amount. Now everyone knows that after 70,000 euros, the, um, every year earned, there's no additional benefit for more. For like, you know, for investment, yes, maybe, but not for your happiness. It's not gonna change your happiness anymore. Um, for me, also a lot of people ask me like how I come up with creatives and uh, there's different approaches. No, but something that actually helps me is a long breathwork session. So before the call, we did like a, you know, how long do you take? 30 seconds. Uh, Patrick and me, how long do we do it? Like uh, three or four years? As in three years, we, uh, we do a breathwork session with a, with a trained, trained coach. Um, sometimes dry session, sometimes underwater session. But uh, these sessions of like one and a half hours of, of continuous breathing through the nose, it make, gives you so much clarity and then you can use it to you know, solve problems in your life or brainstorm for ads or whatever you need in this week. But that's something that helps me a lot is like this long breathwork session of one and a half hours through the nose, circular, without any holding breath, but just continuous breathing. And it can go crazy like, so I learned it at, uh, at Burning Man. If uh, anyone wants to think of going, recommend you just go there. Burning Man is an amazing experience. You learn a lot of skills you don't learn in the normal life. So I really recommend you to go there. Um, on the second day there, I was just driving around with my bicycle and then it said breathwork uh, session. And I had no idea what it is, so I just walked in there the first time I was there and did a session and after one and a half hours of breathing, I left my body. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. I should do this more often. <laughs> and now I do it every, every first day. Um, so yeah, again. Try breathwork if you want, and if you can, try to go to Burning Man with like some recommendations for, for happiness. Um, again, another, um, another Burning Man, so Burning Man is an art, art festival, the money doesn't exist, right? So you go there and you have to be prepared, but for one week, you cannot buy anything. Like in Elon Musk, for example, the only vacation he does every year is uh, Burning Man. So that last time also I saw him there. So you really meet very cool people and uh, and money doesn't exist, right? So for one week, you can just trade. And you cannot go, okay, um, Matteo, uh, I give you a water, can you give me a pencil? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not allowed. Like you cannot trade, it's no barter. I give you with water because I want to give you water, but I don't want anything back, right? I just give you. Like, so people just give you a beer or give you food or like, like for example, everyone brings something. So what I tried, because everyone gets like uh, sunburned on the lips. So I brought um, a sun lotion for the lips because no one has it there and people are like, oh yeah, this is a great present to get because I'm like 40 degrees and I got so sunburned that so you really help, right? So, but you cannot use money for seven days, which is a very cool experience. So I really recommend trying it. 
one of the cool conversations I had there, like this is off Facebook, what I really wanted to share with you, is about um, climate change. With one one serial founder in my camp, he already made like 12 companies, out of which he sold like four or so. So very cool, cool guy. And um, he said this to me, and I wanted to share it. You know, like to solve climate change, we were like, you know, having a beer and philosophizing about climate change. And he said, look, people just don't work really hard on it right now. Like it's something that is super urgent, super important, but people don't work really hard on it. And like just thought experiment, and I don't mean to offend anyone with this, so like don't, don't take it wrong, no? Just thought experiment. Um, if now all the women in the world decide that we won't have sex with our guys anymore until climate change is solved, or the other way around, right? Now, now in this case, you would have four billion men like every politician, every company owner, every, uh, every, person, every poor person in India, Pakistan, anywhere, all working on one goal together. Because it's something that, you know, as humans, we really like that. And we would all work on one goal together, and we would do any policy we can. We would, the companies would, would think as clear as they can to solve it. And every, we would all be aligned on the goal. Like, even the poor people would be like, yes, what can we do? What, how can we get across? How long would you think it would take? And you can actually suck CO2 out of air already. It's already possible. So how long would it take to solve climate change? Just for experiment. Now there's no answer, but think about it. If we would really be motivated to work on it fully, it could actually be done way faster than <laughs> to, to solve it. No, it's like um, <laughs> just, just for experiments. No, so really, it makes you think out of the box a little bit. That's why I I I really like it. Um, all right, now to um, yeah give a conclusion. This again is um, like um, how our A-B testing looks like. I know you can't read it. It's just if anyone wants uh, these A-B testing sheets, you can just uh, write me an email just with sheet or something or A-B testing and I'll, I will send it over. So it's an Excel file with some of the A-B tests which for us are, are useful. And um, yeah, Patrick and me, we have like a Facebook marketing meetup. When is the next one? <laughs> All right, yeah. So exactly. So like, we're gonna do the next one in yeah in a month more or less. So we have this group, or like you can yeah if you're not connected, it's with my Instagram, my LinkedIn, whatever. And um, if you want to hear more funny stories about Burning Man or briefing or uh, of Meller, what happened? Uh, there's the podcast. If you just go to Spotify and you type in Chris Ertl, there should be a couple of podcasts coming up. If you want to listen to them, if you want to hear some crazy stories, feel feel free. And uh, I'll conclude with one more creative that uh, they show something that can be very precise and that I'm very proud of because I got a lot of um, yeah, feedback. It's this one. Hunger is entirely solvable. You can share your meal with Peter and me. Will you help? Yes, Peter. Well, so again, bold statement. Hunger is entirely solvable. Right, so again, statement, hunger is entirely solvable. It explains how. It takes three seconds. And so this ad got a lot of people to donate. And that's a project that I really want to be also involved because don't, let's also think like we have this very powerful tool, like I said before, not using the most powerful machine ever. And let's also think if we can use it for good, making the world a little bit better, making some good effects, and people shouldn't be starving. No? So that's something very easy. Um, and the cool thing is now, it already is like a project that's like recently more or less new. It's already 150 million or 149 million meals shared, which means they got breakfast, uh, dinner, and lunch 149 million times. Still has to get much bigger, but it's already it's already some something. Um, but yeah, I really think I see you're very ready. You're all very smart people, so you have what it takes to make ethical ads because they perform better. You know the guidelines, and um, let's go out there and make it happen. <laughs>